Hello, in my video on the Euler method of coming up with an approximation for a first order differential equation of this form, through a start point like that, I um, found, we, we saw that all the points that we were creating, all our approximations here, were all a bit low in terms of their y values, weren't they? They were all on that side. Um, and this is in a, with a case here where my curvature, my second differential is positive and the curve's going like that. So why is this happening? Well, every point, effectively I'm taking the tangent to predict the next point on it. So it's always underestimating, isn't it? Because the gradient's increasing. Yeah. Um, and if I had a concave curve, it'd be like that. All the points would be too high. So that's the problem, is they, this approach seems to underestimate or overestimate the value of y. So how can I get more accurate answer? Well, we could start thinking about using the midpoint gradient. Okay, so this is Euler's approach. We take the gradient from this point here, our base point, and we apply it going up. So we get an, under, an underestimate in terms of y. But what we could do is it might be better if we took the gradients like the average gradient along this line. And we do that by going to a midpoint here. So if I go along a distance h, find the point here, my, which is going to be my p1 now, and using the gradient at that point. So I take the gradient from there. I, use, I start at my start point that I had originally. That's my p0. I use the gradient from P1 and I project up till I get to P2. And as you can see in this case, it looks like it might be slightly over my curve. So I've managed to solve that. Now, the one thing I do need to think about is how do I get the gradient at that point? Well, I have to go back to using Euler, don't I, for that first point. But if I just go through an example, it will become clear how the process works. This is just an iterative method. So. Here's my differential equation, and it does rely on the fact that I can get dy by dx on its own on this side, and I can put everything else on the other side, yeah? So here's my differential equation, and I'm going to start at 1, 1, and I'm going to move in small steps, so my little delta x is a 0 0.1, and here's my iterative process um, formula. So what am I going to do first? Well, I'm going to start at 1, 1, and I'm going to find the gradient of 1, 1, so that's because this is my p0 point. Um, I just sub the values in just like we did before at 1, 1. I find my gradient at that point is 2. And I find my first point along p1 using my Euler equation here. There we go. Just my Euler linearization. So I started at 1. Uh, my gradient is 2. And I've got an increment of 0 0.1. So I get to 1.2. So that's effectively the Euler P1, just like it was before. But then we start to change things. So um, I start at P1, and I want to now, um, I've got my P1, and I know my P0. I need to find my gradient at P1. Well, I've got my formula for P1, gradient, and it's my diff equation. Sub the values in, and I get my 2.938. That's the same value we got for the Euler method. But now things change because I want to find what my P2 is. And I find my P2 by starting at P1 and finding using the gradient at sorry, P0. I use the gradient from P1 and I'm going twice the increments, aren't I? So that's so I start at P1, my great and my y value was 1.0 my gradient at p1 is 2.98 and i'm going two lots of 0 0.1 so my new y value is 1.5876 that's higher than it was from the euler one so there's my p2 and i can do the same thing again to get to p3 i find the gradient at p2 that's my midpoint now going to be my midpoint so I've now got a gradient at P2 as being 5.46. I want to find P3, so I need to find Y3. And I find that by starting at Y1 and using the gradient from Y2 and going twice as far. So that's 1.2 um, is my Y1 times the gradient. 
5.44 times 2 times 0 0.1. So my P3 point is going to be 1.3, 2.2883. Again, higher than we got from the Euler calculation. Then I'm going to find my fourth point, stick my P3 into there. I'm going to find my gradient at point 0.3. That's 13.67. And then I'm going to use my midpoint equation. So I start at y2. Um, that's my first point, 1.576. And then I'm using my gradient from the midpoint. And I'm going twice as far. And I get a y is 4.32. So that's my p4. So And again, my y value is higher. So let's have a look at that graphically. Here are the points I just worked out. I've called them M here on my graph, and they're the red ones because they're my midpoint calc. So this little dot here is my M21. Um, it's going to be the same as my E, my Euler point. Those two are both the same at this point. But look what's happening now. My midpoints are staying very close to my computerized projection, whereas my... Um, Euler points are drifting away, aren't they? So I think you can see that this is a more accurate method than Euler. So and if they ask you in Excel to use the midpoint method, this is what you're going to do. OK, so here we have a summary of the midpoint method. Uh, remember, we're finding our gradient from our function, from our differential equation. There it is. We're starting at the point they give us on our differential equation as our initial condition. Um, then to find our first point, uh, P1, we're going to use Euler, but from then on we're going to use, to find P2, P3, etc. We're going to be using our midpoint iterative formula like that. Once again, if I want to make it more accurate, I just make the increment smaller. So there you have it. Best of luck.